Hello, and welcome to the State Street Digital Podcast. I'm James Redgrave, Vice President of Thought Leadership for State Street Digital, and I'm joined by Luke Brereton, Head of Client Engagement for State Street Digital, and Michael Metcalf, Global Head of Macro Strategy for State Street Global Markets. Luke and Michael, thank you for joining me. Pleasure. Thanks, James. So you've both contributed articles to the latest Digital Digest newsletter discussing market trends in crypto and digital asset investment. And we also talked a little bit about uh, the new digital finance survey. So, Michael, the results of the survey suggest an increase in allocations to crypto over the longer term, but not the shorter. Would you say that FTX and the scandal surrounding that had anything to do with this trend? And do you think that the longer term allocation plans suggest that perhaps its impacts might be somewhat ephemeral? Well, I mean, I I think obviously we have to start by saying that crypto was already in a challenging environment before FTX happened. And then, of course, as the scandal has broken, then you know it's revealed just how bad things have been in that part of the market. Um, so I think given your survey was conducted at that time, uh, it, it's perhaps not too surprising that there, there's some negative commentary. I mean, interestingly, one of the things that we track is negative media sentiment towards Bitcoin uh, in particular. And certainly that did spike as the FTX scandal broke. I think the only thing that we observe looking at it today, as in, in early January, is that it, it actually has subsided a little bit, which is maybe a little bit surprising. Media has been very negative. Uh, the scandal, what it's revealed, has been very troubling. Uh, it's revealed some significant systemic weaknesses in certain parts of the uh, the crypto space. Looking forward, of course, you might hope that that will now be the catalyst to address some of the concerns that investors might have. But you know, obviously, for the moment, it's probably too early to tell. Thanks, Michael. And Luke, moving on to one of the other findings of the survey, which is that there's been a sort of certainly a, a short term plan to sort of downsell cryptocurrency allocations specifically, but a definite increase in interest in other forms of digital asset um, and the potential for tokenization of more mainstream assets and also sort of integrating some of the technology around cryptocurrencies, etc. into the um, investment and trading environment. How does that tally with your conversation with State Street's um, clients and other investment institutions? Yeah, thanks, James. Interesting question. And just building on some of the comments from uh, Michael, I think some of the events we've seen, like FTX, for example, has really polarised opinion in the markets and amongst our clients between those who sort of didn't really proactively invest or get involved with crypto, uh, feeling somewhat justified that the industry was a little bit too young and a little bit too naive and wasn't being run by organisations that had that deep understanding and experience of what it takes to offer uh, financial services and participate in financial markets. However, we see continued interest growing at a rapid rate amongst, I'd say, our core client base, um, looking at how they can apply this technology to impact their current operations, to open up new revenue opportunities, and really just to transform the marketplace. I mean, we know that financial markets is a hotbed of innovation. And whenever uh, anybody involved in financial markets gets hold of new technology, new ideas, new products, we see a rapid growth there. And that's exactly what we're seeing with DLT uh, and digital assets more generally. And I'd say tokenization really is where most of our clients want to focus on right now. uh, And they want to look at how this changes the value chain and how this potentially brings them closer to the end investor as well. Thank you, Luke. I'm interested in this this question of media sentiment that you mentioned before, Michael, and the sort of relationship between perspectives on on these assets and this technology. I guess what I'd like to know is to what extent is sort of selling and volatility in the market uh, a result of sort of media stories around it? Obviously, in the case of FTX, we can point to something specific, but also to what extent does sell offs happen and then uh, media sentiment get sort of bad, so to speak? Um, what's what's the cart and what's the horse um, in in this area? And the other thing I'd be interested to know is sort of how long do these spikes of poor media sentiment tend to last? Yeah, that's a very good question. I I think just starting with the last part of it, media cycles are media cycles, and they they do tend to be quite short. However, I I think compared to, say, the sell-off that we saw uh, in the summer and the the, the kind of negative media that that generated, uh, it's interesting that, that our measure suggests that the sort of longevity of the negative sentiment surrounding FTX hasn't been as long as the the sell-off we saw in the summer. And then just going on to why it matters, I think to Luke's point, you know, obviously it matters because the crypto industry is still so young. Uh, I think, in fact, I think it recently celebrated its 14th anniversary or Bitcoin did, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and when you're trying to get acceptance, and, and I think, I imagine this must be a, 
an incredibly frustrating thing for Luke that, you know, I, I'm talking purely just about Bitcoin here. Uh, and of course, Bitcoin just grabs all the headlines because it was the biggest asset. But there's so much more to digital and the technology that is behind it than just the Bitcoin price. As it currently stands, Bitcoin obviously still does dominate the media. That will, of course, change, I'm sure. Uh, but but for the moment, it does. Uh, and the reason it matters for Bitcoin is because, you know, I think particularly when, you know, th- there's this kind of push to get more retail investors involved and that kind of thing, then your know, media sentiment obviously is going to impact retail flows. And in fact, uh, you know, one of the studies that our academic partner, Antoinette Shaw, did found exactly that, that retail flows did matter quite a bit for Bitcoin. Uh, and of course, retail flows are going to be influenced by the media and recent price action because, and, and you know, that, and what, tends to happen is that will exacerbate momentum, uh, which can exacerbate volatility in downturns like we've had. So that's why the media matters. But as I said, you know, I, I think there is this kind of you know, perhaps incorrect fixation in the media. You know, this is the financial media too, uh, is they're probably always going to focus on Bitcoin for now, uh, you know, even though there's a lot more to this story than that. Definitely. And that does bring me on to what I wanted to ask Luke about next, which is that when you're sort of out in the market talking to to clients and to the sort of investment industry about this technology and um, the potential of this technology to sort of transform various areas of their business, to what extent do stories around things like Bitcoin price, FTX, which is not necessarily sort of relevant to to what you're trying to talk about, affect the willingness of, of people to talk to you about it? I don't think it impacts on their willingness to talk to me um, or any of my colleagues about it. I think everybody is extremely willing to engage and have conversations and to share what they're doing and what they're thinking in this area. I think with some of the issues that we saw with the market infrastructure last year, these are not new issues. Uh, you know, sadly, very sadly, not treating client assets uh, as client assets is something that's been in uh, the financial markets industry for for many many years, right? And we've seen many established players um, fall foul of that, and um, even large institutions have been fined for not having the right controls in place. So that that's not a new thing. I think it's just the nexus with crypto, which, as Michael pointed out, is in its infancy as an asset class, and um, it's probably yet not fully understood how the price is derived and driven. So I think that you know that kind of lack of understanding or or that part of discovery brings an extra dimension to discussions around crypto. But for digital assets more broadly, what the industry is really looking for is clarity from regulators on how these should be treated and if there's additional rules or capital that's required. So I think you know over time as the regulators really get to uh, handle on uh, digital assets and the impact on the way that financial markets work, this will sort of help to bring a more um, concise narrative in the marketplace around using this technology and actually starting to transform the way risk or capital is moved around our financial markets. Excellent. Luke, Michael, thank you very much. Thank you, James. Thanks, James. To learn more about the topics discussed in this podcast, or to read the full January State Street Digital Digest, or see the full results of the State Street Digital Assets Survey, visit statestreet.com.